was my cross you bore so I could live in the freedom you died for and now my life is yours and I will sing of your goodness forevermore worthy is your name Jesus you deserve the praise worthy is your name worthy is your name Jesus you deserve your glory fills this place you alone deserve our praise you're the name above all names be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place you alone deserve our praise you're the name above all names be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place you alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Oh yes, worthy is your name. She Philippians chapter 2, beginning in verse 5, it says, Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant. Now, I don't know about you, but I love a good rags to riches story. I think we all love to hear the stories of people who started out with very little and made something great of their lives. In fact, the very first movie I ever saw in a movie theater was Rocky, like the original Rocky. The story of this nobody from Philadelphia who took on the heavyweight champion of the world and went all 15 rounds. It was the most popular movie in theaters that year, and it won the Academy Award for Best Picture that year as well. Because we all love those underdog stories, those rags-to-riches stories. But the story of the gospel... The story of Jesus was not a rags-to-riches story. It was a riches-to-rags story. He left the glories of heaven, was born in a manger, lived the life of a servant. He knelt down and washed the feet of his disciples, was rejected by his own people, and ultimately gave up his life on a cross. He began in a position that could be no higher, and he ended in a position that could be no lower. And what motivated all of that was his love for you and for me. And the great paradox of Christianity is that even though Jesus gave up everything, and even though he died the death of a common criminal, his name today is exalted. It is spoken in prayer countless times every day. It's a name that's included in thousands of worship songs. But the phrase I want you to remember today is that first line in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. It says, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. There's an old saying that goes like this, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. But I would suggest that imitation is also the sincerest form of worship. That real worship isn't just how we sing in a worship gathering. Real worship moves beyond the weekend and into the details of our everyday lives. So here's my challenge today. Over these next few days, look for opportunities to show humility. 
opportunities to set aside your comfort, set aside your schedule, and just serve someone else. Because in doing so, we will point their attention to our Savior, the one who is truly worthy of our worship and our imitation. Let me pray. Lord, we thank you for the self-sacrificing love of our Savior. May we live out that love in our relationships and point people to you. I pray that in Christ's name. Amen.